Let's look at a balloon. Do you know what makes a balloon float on water? Well, it's the upward force exerted by water that makes the balloon float. To experience this, try pushing the balloon under water. You will feel an upward force that makes it difficult to push the balloon down. Now release the balloon, it bounces back to the surface. What happens here is that the applied force acts in the downward direction, pushing the balloon down, but the water exerts an upward force on the balloon pushing it up. This upward force exerted by water on the balloon is known as upthrust or buoyancy and the upward force is called the buoyant force. Have you ever wondered why an iron nail sinks while a huge iron ship floats on water? Let's see. The iron nail sinks as it is solid and compact with less volume in water and its density is greater than water. Thus the upthrust exerted by water on the nail is less than the weight of the nail. This causes it to sink. An iron ship floats as it is hollow, filled with air and occupies more volume in water and its density is less than water. Thus the upthrust exerted by water on the ship is greater than the weight of the ship letting it float. These examples indicate that the magnitude of the buoyant force depends on the volume V of the immersed part of the body, the density rho of the fluid and the acceleration due to gravity G. Thus, upthrust or buoyant force is equal to V rho G. In general, an object experiences a loss of weight in water due to the upthrust and it is equal to the weight of water displaced by it. This is better answered using the law of buoyancy, also known as the Archimedes principle, named after the Greek scientist who discovered it.